Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Matthews, and I am so excited to be here. It's a, a great sunny day in Alabama, but I have a special guest for you. And Tim, I'm going to start with just letting you introduce yourself uh, to our audience. I'm Tim Wilburn, and I run a small automation company with my wife, Amber, in Roanoke, Virginia. And how did you get into the industry? How, you know, I, I want to know like how you got into the industry, but I also want to know how you got into this business together. So I, um, I actually grew up in a machine shop. I worked in my dad's machine shop when I was 12. And really that I learned how to machine and learned how to do basic fabrication. And I always joked that I wasn't a very good machinist, so I had to find something else. But really, I tell people, you can never pass your parent in experience. So they had 30 years on you. And I thought that time people were starting to want turnkey equipment. Used to, you know, you build the mechanical equipment, you take it to an electrician, then you take it to a controls place, and then everybody point fingers when it didn't work. And so companies wanted to be able to say, hey, I need a machine to do this. Can you make it happen? And they needed someone to do the controls part. They didn't have anybody. So I gave it a shot and I found one I had a knack for it. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was something I had a passion. I loved doing. And so that's kind of how I got into controls. And then Amber and I actually, people always ask me, you know, what's the, what's the, what's the grand plan for starting a business? Amber and I both quit our jobs while we were eight months pregnant with our first child and started TW Controls. Oh, I know how that is. My my ch- my daughter was nine months old when I started the business, and so um, it's it's like okay, we're doing this, and and this is hard work, and it, it's going to matter though. At the end of the day, I'm sure that you've saw, seen this. The hard work pays off, and the flexibility is there. Yeah, yeah, you know. But we, you know, I knew how to do automation, but I didn't know how to sell anything. I didn't know how to talk to a customer. I didn't know how to market anything. I didn't know all those things, you know, that everybody thinks, you know, that you do need to know. And, but I did remember something that a boss had told me one time, you know, we did big projects and he told me one day, we're going to start selling air cylinders. And I thought, well, why would we sell air cylinders? And he said, well, you know, we'll have the big projects to pile on the, pile on the profit, but you need something to pay those daily bills. And I remember that. And so I created our first PLC trainer really to pay those daily bills. And it didn't work because we still didn't know how to market. <laughs> but we did come up with a few other products and we did figure out how to start marketing things. And then we kind of circled back around to the PLC trainers. And what I found was people, they were buying them and they're like, hey, I need, I want more. I want to learn more. And especially, you know, we have somebody who, who's, you know, a mechanical person. And they're like, you know, I'm watching and all of a sudden there's an electrical problem. I have to throw my hands up in the air. Or I'm an electrician. I'm like, you know, if I knew, I know there's a problem with a wire. And I know I got to get this program and a programmer in here to tell me which wire it is. If I knew how to at least look into that PLC, then I could figure this out. So that kind of became what we do. We always say, you know, we help you become a better technician. So if you're in mechanical, we help you get to electrical. If you're in electrical, we help you get to program. We just help you get that next step up in your career. So that's that's kind of how we got here. And it just kept evolving. And finally, people were like, hey, can I just come and hang out with you for a week? And I'm like, no. <laughs> First, you, you, our, our job is not as exciting as it looks on the internet, but we finally developed our in-person training. So March of 2020, right before the world shut down, we signed the lease. And then we found out, yeah, we were going to have some time on our hands to get everything nailed down. But so yeah, as, the, as things open back up, uh, it really took off. Yeah, well, I think that it shows your passion for training and understanding that PLC. And they're like, okay, if I can understand this and teach it, then this is where I want to, you know, kind of spend my time, which makes mm-hmm. sense. And kind of going back to the basics anytime is great. I think that's what we all learned during the pandemic. Uh, you know, wh- what do I enjoy doing? And um, it's great that you and your wife can share that uh, in, in the business and the videos. So, so with that, and I understand the videos at, from the pandemic, you know, cause we're all at home and, and can create or in your new space, uh, you've got to use mm-hmm. it for something. Right. Uh, yeah. So, you know, was that new for you kind of getting on that camera and like, how did that go? 
you know, originally, you know, people always ask, how do you, how did we grow our YouTube channel? And it was very accidental. We, we started out, we, we developed some products and we needed somewhere to put, you know, the lessons. And we found, you know, this was early on. We found that people, they, they, they caught on quicker to how to use a product or a video than a 10 page instruction name. And so really it just started out. We were just putting, Hey, here's how to use our products. And then it just kind of kept evolving. And then we, we started putting out some really basic control panel building videos. And they were really to promote us, you know, hey, we, uh, we can build a control panel for you. And so finally, someone asked us if we could build, if we could make a video on control panels that wasn't so boring. And really, it was meant to be a joke. Uh, I, made, I made a video that was really me learning how to mix videos and cutting up. And it was meant for one person. And last time I checked, I think it has about 350,000 views now. <laughs> but it changed the way that I make videos because before it was probably more of the faceless, you know, step one, step two, right. step three. To all of a sudden, it's like, okay, we do not have to be this serious. We can show people that we're actually humans. We can show people, oops, I messed up. Hold on, guys. Um, we need to do this instead. That's cool. Do it. And, and, you know, next thing we knew, we, we had like 10,000 subscribers and it's like, oh, well, we've got something here. Now, what can we do with this? So then we kind of started forming together like, okay, let's make some lesson series. So we started right. making how to's. Right. And that's the, that's the thing, the f- figuring out what you're good at, what you can be passionate about, and then th- having those resources that you, you can turn into. Um, I, I guess that also even validates us a little bit. It's like, okay, I've created something for you. You can buy this now, right? Versus yeah. I'm just here talking. And so I think I think that is um, wonderful. I love the YouTube. Uh, the growth there is amazing. So uh, I know that people are attracted to that of like, if they're creators, like, okay, tell me more about how you got all those people to, to there. But it's, it's really about being genuine. It sounds like, and, yeah. and kind of using that um, real world view on YouTube. I know that's definitely part of what they're interested in seeing. So is there what a certain group of people? About? Go ahead. Finding what you're passionate about. Yeah. You know, we've made lots of YouTube videos that we found out were not what we were interested in or not what our audience was interested in. And I tell people all the time, you know, they're like, how do I get started on YouTube? And I told them, make 300 really bad videos. Mm-hmm. And in those 300 good. really bad videos, you're going to find a few that you're like, man, that was fun. And people liked it. Yes. Oh, I love it. So, so y'all um, absolutely check them out and we'll put that in the show notes so they can get to it easily. But uh, I'm just curious about the people who are showing up like uh, to your trainings, like, are you able to see who they are? How is that working for you? Yes. Yeah, so most of them are technicians. Uh, they are usually, I'll say, you know, age wise, they're probably, they've been around a few years. They're not, you know, they're, they've got five years or so experience and mainly they have experienced a lot of failure Mm -hmm. and they, they know they're like, man, I've I've got to figure out how to do this better. And so really they come learn, you know, ready to learn, you know, and that's what I tell everybody, everybody's like, what do I need to do to prepare? I'm like, bring a lot of enthusiasm. You bring the enthusiasm and I can teach you how to troubleshoot machines in a week and really you know, ours is not lecture based. Ours really is interactive. I always tell, I always tell everybody, you know, the students do more teaching than I actually do. That, that really, I put people in situations to help them figure out how to think. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, one, we don't make mistakes there. We have learning opportunities. And that's why I say, all right, guys, we have a learning opportunity over here. Let's see if we can figure out what's wrong. And, you know, they all get together and they'll start, you know, they'll figure it out. And then somebody will share an experience. Well, you know, I've I've had this happen before. I did not realize that is what it was. And all of a sudden you get that connection to help them realize it's not just dry information that we're stating to them. All of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, I remember when that happens. Right. And And this is in the classroom there. Yes. Um, And and where are you located? Around in Virginia. Yes. And so um, it's, you have multiple opportunities for people to come in and train with you. Um, Any particular industry that you're seeing more so? Um, no, it, it's a good variety, uh, probably oil and gas and then life sciences. They're probably the two largest, uh, but, you know, right behind them would be food and wastewater. So it's, it's a fairly broad variety. 
Yeah. And, and I love when that happens because we we're all working on the equipment together and well, well not specifically me, but I try to dabble in it at home, uh, every now and then, but there, there is, um, that commonality that, you know, it really doesn't matter what industry. And I think that we can learn from each other, uh, by looking at different processes for sure. Well, that's, you know, we, um, you know, we only have eight students in a class. That's our, that's our hard limit because, you know, we want that interaction, but also I rarely will allow those eight students to be from the same place. Yeah. Because I want you, you know, I want someone in the food industry to see the you know, similarities between that and someone in the water industry and be like, oh, I didn't know I could troubleshoot it that way. I never thought about doing it that way. Because, yeah, that, you know, you know. That's where the innovation and creativity happens and the learning. The learning happens when you are thinking outside of the box, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, wonderful. Well, I... um. I'm so happy that you jumped on here, just kind of letting people know uh, your story, but also I'm excited about IMTS. We have um, the uh, show coming up in Chicago in September. The first, the, the week of the September 11th is when we'll be in Chicago. And I'm excited to be able to uh, connect with other creators like you. So your story about, okay, let's, let's, you know, this is what we're going to do and let's figure it out, I think is common in this space, but it's for that group of manufacturers, those workers in the trades, et cetera, uh, that we can really build this content and help them. And I think that that's, you know, what we're trying to showcase that for other manufacturers as well as, you know, don't be so serious all the time, right? Like you can get outside of the box and do something creative um, and people actually learn better that way. So um, I'm excited to see all the different people in that creators plus lounge that we're going to, um, you know, see, I am, it's IMTS plus creators lounge. So uh, we'll I'll get it right here in a minute, but um, just look forward to seeing you there in Chicago and, and seeing uh, that group and collaborating with all of our creators there. So thanks for jumping on here with me. Absolutely, looking forward to seeing you in person. Yeah, all right, great. Um, all right, I'll let you get back to work. Thanks.